One of the things missing here is something that tells a story for the general public, uh, but tells it honestly. You've got groups on one extreme that I call the deniers. They don't believe this is anything but a conspiracy. On the other extreme, you've got the exaggerators. Uh, the world is coming to an end. If the temperature goes up more than two degrees, it's completely the end of civilization. They exaggerate what we know. And the great uh, group in the middle is all of us. It's the citizens. I wrote this book to explain to the public uh, how we know that the greenhouse effect is real. Without any doubt, the greenhouse effect is real. I know about energy, and I know about fuels, and I know about industrial processes, and I know about efficiency, and I know what you can do in all of those areas. So I talk about energy, and that's the large part of the book. What are the winners? What are the losers? And what don't we know about? What, what can't we classify yet? So some things are clearly winners, and the winners change over time. Right now, if, for example, I could substitute natural gas for all of the coal-fired power plants in the United States, the emissions from the electric sector would drop by a factor of three. That's a really big deal. We know how to do that. We know how to integrate the grid. We don't need a new grid to do that. How come, uh, if you look at all the subsidies that get put out there, the subsidies are for all the things that are very hard to do. The subsidies are for solar. The subsidies are for wind. Yeah, we've got to get those things developed, but why do we not subsidize the things that are easy to do? What qualifies me as a voice for climate change is the fact, first of all, that I'm a scientist. A lot of these questions are scientific questions. I understand uh, these issues, and I know uh, how to analyze them. So if you want to know about energy efficiency in the transportation section, you want to know how good would plug-in hybrid electric vehicles be? That says you've got to know something about engines. You have to be able to compare gasoline engines with electric engines. You have to look at the electric supply. You've got to know something about batteries. These are all scientific and technical questions. Are there political questions here? Yes, indeed. And one part of the book, the last part of the book, is my take on some of the issues. I go into uh, things that are being done in the name of controlling emissions that are smart and things that are dumb. I go into the problems of how to get a world regime to control this because the industrialized nations can't do this by themselves. If the industrialized world stopped emitting greenhouse gases entirely tomorrow, we wouldn't solve this problem. One of the things that you can do is you can calculate accurately and easily what the temperature of the Earth will be if there was no greenhouse effect at all. It's four degrees below zero, but the average temperature of the Earth is 60 degrees and the reason it's so warm is because of the greenhouse effect. Why do you think if I add more of what the Earth makes the Earth warm, I'm not going to make it warmer? Exactly how much warmer is very complicated. It's very simple to figure out the temperature if there's no greenhouse effect at all. But if there is one, then there are all sorts of coupled effects. What uh, the scientific community is doing is trying to put together all of these feedback loops and come up with what the net effect of it all is. But go back to the very beginning, minus 4 degrees, plus 60 degrees, you're adding more of what raised the temperature by 65 degrees, and why do you believe the temperature isn't going to go up if you do that?